The subject of today's study is what happened to the disciples slash apostles of Christ after he ascended. There are many different sources, along with varying details, different descriptions, biographies, if you will, of how the disciples, the apostolic church, died and they went out and preached and where they went after they preached in Jerusalem. One of the more reliable sources is that of Eusebius, dating from 260 A.D. to May of 339 A.D. So you can see there's a couple hundred years at least separating these uh, histories and whatnot. The Greek historian of Christianity, known as the father of church history. So with that point, I'm trying to denote the reliability of these sources because it's not canonical. We're only told about two deaths of the disciples, one of which being Judas Iscariot. In the scripture, the rest are from these sources outside of scripture. Now, for the very first death is the one mentioned in scripture, Judas Iscariot. Almost immediately after he betrayed Jesus, Judas went out and hanged himself. The rope would later break, resulting in his bloated body bursting open. The other is that of James, the brother of John, one of the sons of Zebedee. If you'll remember, whenever Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, who did he take with him to be closest with him? It was Peter, James, and John. Whenever he went upon the Mount of Transfiguration, he only took three with him, which was Peter, James, and John. This is that very same James. Only the deaths of Judas Iscariot and James would be recorded in Scripture. All others would be recorded in other writings and traditions. Acts chapter 12 details how Herod Agrippa the first, not Herod Agrippa in whom Paul would stand in front of, but Herod Agrippa I, and whom we're told very little about. But Acts 12 details how Herod Agrippa I took James, the brother of John, and killed him with the sword. This occurred around 44 AD in Jerusalem after Saul of Tarsus' second visit to Jerusalem after his conversion. That's about 14 years after Christ, and James was the very first of the original 12 disciples to actually be martyred to give his life for Christ. So once again, just for proper context, I would like to quote Christianity.com regarding the others that I'm about to tell you about. How did the apostles die? Reports and legends abound, and they are not always reliable, but it is safe to say that the apostles went far and wide as heralds of the message of the risen Christ. An early legend says they cast lots and divided up the world to determine who would go where. So all could hear about Jesus. They suffered greatly for their faith and in most cases met violent deaths because of their bold witness and faith in Christ. And this is a rather important study because if you haven't heard about these other traditions and sources about how these other apostles died, then you would be left with thinking that everyone except Paul the Apostle died in Jerusalem or the surrounding areas. But the traditions and sources... They strongly disagree with that. According to them, all of these went out far and wide. Herod Agrippa I began persecuting the apostles to satisfy the Jewish people who desired the movement to be crushed. So those in Israel were the first to begin truly persecuting the church. But about 20 years later, in July 64 AD, some two-thirds of the city of Rome was destroyed in the great fire of Rome. The Roman emperor Nero would blame the Christians, sparking hatred among the Gentiles for the new movement. Which brings us to the apostle Paul, in whom would have been imprisoned in Rome around that time. Very dangerous time to be in Rome, and Paul being one of the most popular of Christians, even back in that day, Paul, one of the most popular of Christians, it would not be very difficult to imagine how Paul's death came about. It's believed that Saul of Tarsus, who would become the Apostle Paul, converted to Christianity in 33 AD, about two or three years after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. After over 30 years and four missionary journeys, Paul was imprisoned in Rome, where it's believed he was released after a couple of years. Though he had plans of preaching in Spain, it is not known whether such came into fruition as, after the great fire of Rome in 64 AD, Nero likely had the famous Christian arrested. 
And the Roman Emperor Nero was exceedingly evil, one of the most evil tyrants to ever rule over anything, and him being extremely powerful at that time, he would have attempted to make an example of men like Paul, no doubt. Around 64 to 66 AD, tradition holds that the Apostle Paul was beheaded in Rome, which brings us next to Simon Peter. After Christ's ascension, Peter preached for many years in Jerusalem and the surrounding lands, eventually making his way to Babylon, far to the east, then proceeding apparently to Asia Minor, then Rome. We know from 1 Corinthians that Simon Peter was a very popular figure in the church, as he still is to this day. And so it's believed by some that he followed in the footsteps of Paul and reinforced the gospel message. According to tradition, he was crucified upside down in Rome, believing himself unworthy to die like the Lord. They didn't behead Simon Peter like they did Paul. Paul was a Roman citizen, and beheading was a merciful way to die, whereas crucifixion was just the most brutal and excruciating way of that. I Actually, I heard it said that the Romans, they perfected it to the point where you flirted with death. You would almost die, and then you would kind of pick back up, and you would get breath again. Which brings us now to Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Andrew was actually one of the very first to follow Christ, as John the Baptist directed him to. And he is the very one in whom, if you read the gospel accounts, he was the one in whom professed Jesus as the Messiah first among the twelve, and not Simon Peter. Church historians record Andrew to have preached in Asia Minor, modern Turkey. Andrew then went even further, and it's believed that he was the first to take the gospel north into modern-day Ukraine and Russia. We're told he even managed to preach in the Greek land of Thrace, and it would be in the Greek land that he is said to have been martyred by crucifixion at the city of Petrus in Achaia in A.D. 60. Tradition says he was crucified on an X-shaped cross, believing himself unworthy to be crucified like the Lord. Now for the Apostle Thomas, also known as Doubting Thomas. After the Apostles dispersed, he was probably most active in the area east of Syria. Tradition has him preaching as far east as India, where the ancient Marthoma Christians revere him as their founder. They claim that he died there when pierced through with the spears of four soldiers. Now for the Apostle Philip. Not to be confused with Philip the Evangelist, who taught the Ethiopian eunuch the gospel, if you'll remember in the book of Acts, but one of the first to follow Christ, who told Nathanael of Jesus. Remember, Philip ran and got him under the fig tree. One account of Philip's ministry says that he went preaching into Greece, Phrygia, and Syria with Bartholomew, being eventually beheaded in Hierapolis. However, there is another account of Philip preaching and performing miracles which resulted in the wife of a Roman proconsul being converted. According to that account, Philip and Bartholomew were crucified upside down and Philip preached from his cross. As a result of Philip's preaching, the crowd released Bartholomew from his cross, but Philip insisted that they not release him and Philip died on the cross. Which brings us to Nathaniel, also known as Bartholomew, the very one in whom Philip went and got under the fig tree. Fox's Book of Martyrs claims that in India he was at length cruelly beaten and then crucified by the impatient idolaters. And if this is connected with the tradition of how Philip and him were ministering in Asia Minor, he likely fled there after that persecution, I'm gathering, fled there and traveled to India. Now for the Apostle Matthew, if you'll remember Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the tax collector Matthew, the very first of the gospel authors, which is truly one of the best of testimonies because Jesus took one of the most hated men, a tax collector for Rome, and whom the Jews just absolutely despised because they saw them as traitors. But Jesus went up to this man, this tax collector, and made him a gospel writer. Not just a gospel writer, but he's the very first of the gospel Authors, once again, Matthew reportedly preached in Persia, then traveled to Ethiopia, where he was martyred by being stabbed to death. Now we come to Simon the Zealot. Now this Simon was the exact opposite of Matthew before their conversion, because Simon the Zealot, he was a radical for the Jewish nation. So it's kind of wondered about how they got along there in the, in the very beginning, him and Matthew, because Matthew worked for Rome and Simon, these zealots, they despised Rome more than ordinary Jewish people even. So it's 
you know, it's kind of wondering about how they got along. But as the story goes, he ministered in Persia, modern day Iran. He ministered in Persia and was killed after refusing to sacrifice to the sun god. And what about the later addition, Matthias to the Twelve, whom they voted in to replace Judas Iscariot? He was, of course, the apostle chosen to replace Judas Iscariot. Tradition sends him to Syria with Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, where he was reportedly captured and burned to death. Now for James the Just, the half-brother of Jesus, also the writer of the Epistle of James, who was also the first appointed leader of the Apostolic Church. It was not Simon Peter, but rather James the Just, who was renowned for his righteous lifestyle. Even those in whom did not believe that Jesus was the true Messiah, they loved James because of his pious manner of living. He's actually the one in whom coined in the New Testament, faith without works is dead. It's also important to note, before I go on reading about how he was martyred in Jerusalem, it's important to note how Jesus' brothers, his half-brothers by blood, they did not believe in him. James was likely one of those in whom did not at first believe in him, but later did convert. So that reputation, coupled with his pious manner of living, may have brought about this same interaction between him and the Sanhedrin, in whom did not believe in Jesus. They probably thought that James still didn't believe that his brother was the true Messiah. So in 62 AD, in order to keep the Nazarene sect, or Christians as we're known today, in order to keep the Nazarene sect from spreading, the priests decided to implore James to denounce his brother publicly before the people. This was reportedly during the Passover with tens of thousands present. This would have been a packed house. So the scribes and Pharisees made James stand on the temple parapet, a very high up place, and they shouted to him, O righteous one! whom we all ought to believe. Since the people are going astray after Jesus, who was crucified, tell us, what does the door of Jesus mean? James replied with a loud voice, Why do you ask me about the Son of Man? He is sitting in heaven at the right hand of the great power, and he will come on the clouds of heaven. Many were convinced and rejoiced at James' testimony, crying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Then the scribes and Pharisees said to each other, we made a bad mistake in providing such testimony to Jesus, but let us go up and throw him down so that they will be afraid and not believe in him. And they cried out, Oh, oh, even the just one has gone astray. So they went up and threw down the righteous one. Then they said to each other, Let us stone James the just. And they began to stone him since the fall had not killed him. But he turned and knelt down saying, I implore you, O Lord, God and Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. While they were pelting him with stones, one of the priests cried out, Stop! What are you doing? The righteous one is praying for you. Then one, a laundryman, took the club that he used to beat out clothes and hit the just on the head, killing him. Which now brings us to Jude, another of the brothers of Jesus, who was also the writer of the epistle of Jude. It's traditionally believed that Jude was martyred in Syria on his missionary journey with Simon the Zealot in 65 A.D which would have been around the same time as Paul the Apostle, and it is believed that Jude was also beheaded like the Apostle Paul. Now for the final of these, the Apostle John, who was the author of John's Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The three epistles towards the end of the New Testament, as well as the very final book of the Bible, Revelation. If you'll recall, while Jesus was on the cross, he ordered John to take care of Mary, his mother. And according to reports, when Mary died, John allegedly went to Ephesus, where he wrote his three epistles. From there, he was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the gospel, where he received the revelation from Christ and wrote the book of Revelation while on the island of Patmos. Eventually, he made it back to Ephesus and died an ordinary death sometime after 98 AD. Some people believe that it was before 98 AD. But it's not as if they did not try to kill John. Tertullian, a Christian writer from the late 2nd and early 3rd century, wrote that before the Romans banished John, they brought him into a Colosseum and dunked him in a vat of boiling oil. And according to tradition, when he emerged unharmed, the entire Colosseum converted to Christianity. We know today that Christians are persecuted very heavily, especially across seas and places like China. They still have to hide 
and North Korea. All of these, I have an entire segment on Christian persecution worldwide. But this tells us to beware of the prosperity teachers. Beware of those in whom are all happy and joyful, like the Bible promises Christians a happy and prosperous and glorious life while on the earth. We're promised that in the next life. But while we're down here, we can expect persecution, tribulation, just as the apostolic church did experience and our Lord himself experienced.